You already know what it is. It's your boy Laid Back with another reaction, another review, another episode. Hey, Cat Williams, you up to bat. Wow. It's your boy Laid Back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we got to do. You got to hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water, man. You already know what it is. Elevate more in 2024. Elevate more in 2024. We back with another reaction, man. We got Cat Williams. He been going crazy lately. He been talking some shit. We about to get straight into it, man. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe. Fire Squad was popping. Let's get it. They going above and beyond to pro promote the devil. And it's pissing me off. They going above and beyond to pro promote the devil. The and it's pissing me off. Only God can judge me All of them were red. Did you notice when Diddy, when T.D. Jace came out here to address that he's a zesty bottom, a power bottom at that, he wore that same red color that you see Mr. Man with the dress wear on red. Because it was his turn next. Okay. okay. Some of us are against the Illuminati, and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. Girl, Tyrese Gibson is getting absolutely dragged on social media for walking the red carpet in a red dress. And people are saying Tyrese finally buckled and sold his soul to Hollywood. And word on the street is that Cat Williams tried to warn Tyrese beforehand that the price he'll have to pay for making his move is not worth it. See, over the years, black actors and comedians have often worn dresses for a laugh. I mean, a big towering figure strutting in heels is just Playing ridiculous which makes it hilarious but you also have to wonder what's the trade-off here there's got to be some sort of price tag attached to all that laughter so what's the deal with tyrese wearing that red dress is the dress really some kind of ritual for black men in hollywood let's get into it i don't really know how to complain because all of the people that i ever looked up to had to go through it too tyrese gibson is making waves after he walked the red carpet at a film festival in egypt wearing a bright red dress which he paired with a black blazer and of course it didn't take long before social media picked this up and accused tyrese of doing a dress ritual and selling his soul to hollywood someone on x said they done got tyrese in a dress his finances must have been worse than we thought smh but others wondered if tyrese was actually trying to honor the country he was visiting. One person wrote, could somebody help me understand why Tyrese is wearing a dress? I have a lot of respect for Tyrese. What's going on? Is this a dress or some kind of Islamic garb? Now, regardless of whether this is an actual dress or not, there's been this ongoing narrative, some would call it a conspiracy theory, about how Hollywood makes black actors and comedians wear dresses as a way to humiliate them. All the way back in 2006, Dave Chappelle talked about this theory during his interview with Oprah and revealed he was pushed to wear a dress while working on a movie with Martin Lawrence. When I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down like, why all these brothers gotta wear a dress? This happened to me. I'm doing a movie with Martin. Yeah. The movie's going good. So I walk in a trailer. I'm like, man, this must be the wrong trailer because there's a dress in here. So Dave straight up told the producers he wasn't feeling the whole dress vibe because it didn't fit the scene and it made him feel uncomfortable. But then the director swooped in with a whole crew trying to pressure Dave into throwing on that dress. They all teamed up on him trying to make it happen despite what he was saying. That should have been in a discussion. What? You don't feel comfortable with it. I mean, it's a hilarious bit. All the greats have done it. So well, if all the greats have done it, it's kind of hacky, right? You're right. So why don't we just not do it? Because I don't feel comfortable wearing a dress. Oh, come on, Dave. Listen, we, we got it all set up. We we're supposed to shoot. Every every minute you waste costs this much money. You know, the pressure comes in. Huh. He said, I'm, now I'm not wearing no dress, man. I'm funnier than a dress. Just give me some. Look, man, I don't give a fuck. I'm not wearing no fucking dress, bro. I'm sorry, bro. I'm not. I'm Nah, man. I mean, I'm not with none of that. And it's a lot of dudes that be doing that. It's a lot of dudes that be doing it. So funny to say, I don't even wear no dress to be funny. The producers finally backed off when they realized that Dave couldn't be swayed. And Dave told Oprah they already had a different script on standby. What? So it turned out that the whole dress deal wasn't even needed. They just wanted to test if he'd cave in and say yes to it. But mm. the minute it was clear, I was adamant, I'm not wearing a dress. I'm not wearing the dress. All right, fine. Think of something else. 
Guy comes back 10 minutes later. The whole new scene. How, damn, how did you write the scene so fast? Now, when they later threw the question at Kevin Hart about Dave saying he was pressured to put on a dress, Kevin just shook it off and said that although it never happened to him, he never messed with something that could mess up his whole brand. Uh, I definitely haven't ran in a, to put on the dress. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you have to have... You have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to cross. Day, you got to know that you're a brand. Yeah. I'm a brand. Uh, you need to protect your brand at all times. But get this. A few years down the line, Kevin popped up in an SNL sketch in a dress and oh. almost immediately his whole career skyrocketed. The same year Kevin wore a dress in the SNL skit, Cat Williams was promoting... Hold on. My man came out in a dress smiling. Oh, hold on. The same man. year Kevin wore a dress in the SNL skit, no, look at my dude right here, man. What? Come on, Kev. Cat Williams was promoting Scary Movie 5, and they threw the same question at him about the dress uproar. And Cat straight up laid it down, saying, This Hollywood dress thing has been happening for ages, and that it all comes down to whether you choose to join the Illuminati or not. So, you know, some of us make choices. I think it's mm. not a biggest choice. Um, for others, I'm saying um, at the end of the day, Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. Mm -hmm. So now we have Big Mama's house one, two, and three. Yeah. I've never seen Medea in a pantsuit. I think she wears dresses. So mm -hmm. now I'm saying, why are we picking on poor little Kevin Hart? Because it was his turn next. Mm. <laughs> Some of us are against the Illuminati, and we are against the Illuminati. See, Cap, I mean, Cap, bro, he be, he basically saying, like, like he said, some of us are against it, the Illuminati, and some are not. Basically saying, like, okay, well, he got, it's either get down or lay down. And so he, ch he felt like Kevin Hart lay down. <laughs> Some of us are against the Illuminati, and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. Mm. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them. Mm. Nobody likes them. Now, back then, plenty of folks brushed this off as some wild conspiracy theory. But now, fans are coming through and saying it all adds up. And Kat knew what he was talking about. Because the truth is, there's a whole bunch of black actors and comedians who hit the big leagues after strutting in a dress on screen. It's mm. like a running story in Hollywood. Seems like for any black man comedian to really hit the jackpot, this they have to crazy. step into a dress. Way back in the 70s and 80s, Flip Wilson did it, playing Geraldine on his show. Fast forward to the 90s, Martin Lawrence and Jamie Foxx rocked Shanene on Martin and Wanda on In Living Color. Eddie Murphy jumped in as Mama and Granny Clump in the Nutty Professor series, snagging an Oscar for makeup in 97. Then in the 2000s and beyond, it was like a parade. Sean and Marlon Wayans and White Chicks, Tracy Morgan and Kenan Thompson on Saturday Night Live, Miguel Nunez Jr. and Juana Man, Brandon T. Jackson rolling with Martin in Big Mama's house, and of course the man himself, Tyler Perry. They all suited up in dresses like it's become a rite of passage or something. Now if you want to look at this from a deeper perspective and reflect on the not too distant history of this nation, there's a detailed record of how masters of the enslaved tried to weaken and even destroy the sense of manhood among black Black men. They viewed black men as threats, so they came up with ways to rob them of what they saw as their strength. That right. included horrific measures like castration and many other humiliating methods Hell. of torture. And there's been a debate swirling around whether black men putting on wigs and dresses is a modern day version of that same emasculation. Now to be clear, a black man taking on a black woman's role, whether rocking a dress or a wig or anything else, isn't about stripping away manhood, not for one person or the whole community. Painting that kind of picture is narrow-minded because if black manhood and masculinity are so easily shaken by slipping on a dress or some hair pieces, then it's as fragile as it is toxic. But see, what doesn't get enough attention is how these women characters that these black men take on don't really get the respect and humanity they deserve. You see, a lot of the jokes that keep coming back, the stuff that keeps getting repeated in these stories, it's all about these characters' looks, like how tall they are, or their big hands, wide shoulders, hairy legs, or even facial hair. It's all about these features that, in a world stuck on strict categories, women aren't supposed to have. Mm. You see? You better be glad this ain't no liquor, cause come 12 o'clock, I turn into a wolf. <laughs> Must be a quarter to one. <laughs> I'm the one 
and her body, man. Like she was strong. I think she was like an athlete or something, man. And when she got you in that love lock, it was over. <laughs> it was over. Oh, man. And her arm. And even when these characters are supposed to be real women and not just some costume, they still get shortchanged. It's pretty clear how this mirrors the real life dehumanization of black women because the mm. same lack of recognition and respect follows them around in real life too. Now you'll notice that pretty much every black man who's gotten famous playing a woman on screen will tell you their character is based on real women they know, like Tyler Perry. He claims his inspiration comes from his mom and aunt. Then you got Martin Lawrence saying he drew inspiration from those fly streetwise ladies named after fancy cars from the block. Jamie Foxx, same deal. Sure, it's comedy, but a bunch of these characters, not all of them, but quite a few, somehow end up poking fun at a certain kind of femininity or sort of look down on a certain way of being a woman. Not always, just sneaking in a joke here and there. So when you put together these two issues, how they feminize black masculinity and how they might show black womanhood in a distorted way, this can have real life consequences and affect how black men and women are seen. There are also those who That's believe real. that the feminized image of black masculinity is a way to make black men seem less threatening, almost a way to balance out the powerful image of black men that's so common in hip hop culture and take the edge off of that strong, empowered vibe. Terrence mm. Howard previously spoke about this and claimed that only white men are allowed to be portrayed as strong and non-threatening at the same time. Terrence said, wow. with the new formula, most men are made to be effeminate and not have their power or sense of strength. They allow white men to be able to be strong but when it's black men, it's seen as a threat. I don't want to remove a few chromosomes to fit in someone's story, so I feel they need to expand their stories to allow men to be men and simultaneously appreciate a woman's beauty. As Hell for Cat yeah. Williams and his previous comments about the Illuminati and the alleged dress ritual, a lot of people initially dismissed him as a conspiracy theorist. But when he was later asked to elaborate on all this, Cat doubled down and said all conspiracies come from somewhere. But how do you feel about Tyrese wearing that dress on the red carpet? Do you think it's really some type of humiliation ritual or are folks blowing this? this out of proportion? Let me know in the comments and what then the check this? out this next video. Hell no. Hey man, this shit crazy, man. Cat Williams, uh, Kevin Hart came out. We all know what Cat Williams has been doing lately on the Shannon Sharp podcast going crazy, talking about all these comedians, talking about the Illuminati, talking about people, what they had to do to get certain roles. But the twist on what they were talking about as far as with the black man putting on the dressings and stuff like that and how it is a spinoff on how it is also depicting black women. I didn't think about that side in regards to, you know, like they emasculating the man, but they also like trying to make the black woman skew her image as well. So it's like a double edged sword. Y'all let me know in the comments, man. What do y'all think about this shit? I'm not fucking with none of that. Period. But till next time, self-love and positivity. Bar squad, I got you when you know it. Hey.